Hey guys, how's it going? This is Watch from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we're doing a direct comparison between the iPad Air and the Windows Surface 2 RT Edition. Now, these tablets are fairly different from each other. They share some commonalities in terms of functionality and hardware specifications, but they're really quite different in terms of usability. And uh, it's not like one is easier to use than the other in a drastic way. Obviously, there are some users that will prefer one tablet over the other depending on what they used before but I think this is going to be a really interesting comparison because uh, since there are some crossing over of some of the technical specifications as well as some of the software functionalities so what we're going to do is take a look at each aspect of the tablets and see how they compare against each other and see if either of them are right for you. Now the first thing that we're going to take a look at when comparing the iPad Air to the Surface 2 is the overall physical dimensions and design of both of the tablets. In terms of physical dimensions, the iPad Air measures about 240 millimeters in its height, 169.5 millimeters in its width, and the Microsoft Surface 2 is just a bit larger, measuring about 275 millimeters in its height and about 173 millimeters in its width. Moving forward, when we take a look at thickness, it's not called an iPad Air for no reason it's still 7.5 millimeters in its thickness which is certainly a lot thinner than the 8.9 millimeters surface 2. furthermore in terms of weight the ipad air measures about 469 grams for the wi-fi edition it's about 10 grams more if you get the lte model and the surface 2 is significantly heavier measuring about 676 grams now when we take a look at the build quality of both these devices you'll notice that the surface rt is definitely up there with the iPad iPad build quality. It's using really high quality aluminums and plastics and glass, much in the same vein as the iPad Air. So they're really on par with each other. I love the fact that the Windows Surface 2 incorporates that kickstand that we saw in the first Surface tablet computer from Microsoft. And obviously you can do the same thing by getting a case on the iPad, but it's pretty cool that it has it kind of built in on the Surface 2. Now in terms of the shape and form factor, both these devices are fairly similar in terms of overall footprint there's not a massive difference between the two as you saw from the raw measurements but they are in different orientations the microsoft surface is definitely designed to be more of a landscape device obviously you can use it in portrait mode but you get less of the width resolution compared to the ipad which is great for reading different web pages and magazines and different print stuff and uh, obviously you can do the same stuff on the ipad in terms of media consumption watching a HD video and stuff like that, but you will find uh, a little bit more bars on the top and bottom of your screen compared to the Surface, which is more of a widescreen 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But again, the screen will dictate your own needs in terms of what you prefer and what you use the tablets for, so it's definitely a personal preference. Now, when taking a look at the external ports and buttons, you'll notice that both devices have a standby power button, a volume rocker button, as well as a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack now another cool thing that apple has added is the dual microphone setup at the top of the ipad air which is definitely going to give you better overall sound quality pickup because it's actually going to focus directly on your voice a little bit more clearly and it's going to try to suppress any background noise that's irrelevant so therefore you're going to get clear more crisper uh, voice recordings or just getting better audio when you're recording video as well as siri is going to be able to recognize you a little bit clearer as well. The iPad Air employs a lightning connector for its charging and data transferring needs. And the cool thing about the lightning connection is that it's fairly durable. You can plug it in in any orientation that really fits, but it has no other ports or expansion slots located on the device versus the Surface 2 is fully loaded with different ports, starting with a full size USB 3.0, which is able to give you super high speeds up to five gigabits per second and transfer for rate as well as a micro sd expansion slot so you can upgrade your internal memory up to 64 gigs which is awesome as well as an hd video port connection so you can therefore use an external display or monitor therefore making the surface 2 much more like a laptop or a fully fledged computer than a conventional one purpose tablet now that's not saying the ipad air is not expandable in terms of many things in fact you can get a lot of adapters for the 
the lightning connection to either hook in an SD card or any kind of USB connection or even an external monitor. And interestingly enough, both the tablets can be hooked up to a full-size keyboard that both Apple and Microsoft sell that specifically fits onto the tablet in a very proprietary way and therefore you can use either of the tablets as a laptop replacement. Now moving forward, obviously a big component of any tablet is going to be the screen and the overall size and resolution. And in terms of size, the iPad Air measures about 9.7 inches. It has an LED IPS display, which is very, very good. And the Surface 2 has a 10.6 inch TFT display, which is also very good and can be viewed at many different angles. In terms of the resolution, however, the iPad certainly wins because it it has the retina display and it has a resolution of about 2048 by 1536 with a PPI count of 264 versus the 1920 by 1080 screen that's on the Surface 2 which has a PPI about 208. Now in terms of the internal hardware you'll notice that the new iPad Air has the exact same specifications as the iPhone 5S so it has an Apple A7 chip with a dual core processor clocking about 1.3 gigahertz. Now the Surface 2 has a Tegra 4, which is a quad core chip, and that's clocked about 1.3. 7 gigahertz which is certainly faster than what's in the iPad Air and the Surface 2 has another edge in terms of RAM because it has twice the amount of RAM having 2 gigs of RAM versus the iPad Air's 1 gig of RAM. Now to test the speeds of both the devices uh, fortunately there is a cross-platform benchmarking tool called 3 Mark that is going to allow us to test the CPU, GPU and RAM of the both of the systems and figure out which one is better in terms of processing power. Now, when we review the results of the 3D Mark benchmark, you'll notice the iPad Air wins it, which is pretty amazing considering it's a dual core processor versus a very highly clocked quad core Tegra 4 in the Surface 2. The Surface 2 is getting about 9,588, and the iPad beats the Surface 2 by getting a score of 10,537. Now, when we take a look at the graphics score on the iPad Air versus the Surface 2, you'll notice that the iPad Air is definitely winning in terms of getting higher FPS on average in both graphic tests 1 and 2. But when we take a look at the physics score, you'll notice that the Surface 2 is actually doing a much better job. It's getting about 11,716 versus the iPad Air, which is getting about 8,494 on its physics score. Now the iPad Air comes in several different models, whether you want the Wi-Fi only or the cellular plus Wi-Fi models, and they also come in different segments depending on what internal memory you want. Unfortunately, there is no expandability on the iPads, so you have more options in terms of the different sizes. So it starts from 16, 32, 64, and 128 gigabyte models. On the Surface 2 side, they only come in really two models, which is the 32 and 64 gigabyte models. Models. And uh, you can also update that memory, as we mentioned before, using that micro SD expansion slot up to 64 gigabytes. Now, the key thing to any great tablet experience is really how the hardware interacts with the software and if the user finds all those features useful and easy to use. And in both cases, I do find that both experiences are fairly well laid out. Obviously, the iPad has a little bit more easy in terms of learning curve. I think that Windows RT definitely has some great benefits as well as some really kind of quirky stuff that it does, uh, like a lot of different Microsoft products out there. But in terms of the ease of use, I think if you spend enough time with both of them, you really like them. There are some interesting drawbacks and some benefits to each of the OS. I do think overall, if you're a first time tablet user and not really used to the Windows environment, uh, you definitely are going to be interested in the iPad Air just in terms of the iOS is so easy to use and so established in terms of uh, user friendly OS and interactivity. It's something that really anybody can use. On the other side, if you're a big time Windows user and you've used 
a lot of the Windows product and you're very familiar with Windows 8, for example, if you use that for your desktop solution, you'll find the RT experience on the Surface 2 to be absolutely amazing. I know I have. I love the flexibility of it. It is very, very powerful. Unfortunately, it's not a full Windows solution. You can't download some apps that are not available in their own store. So it is limited to some extent, and I'm sure you can unlock all those features because it is very, very powerful. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the cameras that comes in both these two devices. When we take a look at the front facing camera, you'll notice that the Surface 2 definitely has the advantage of the higher quality camera on the front facing side because it has a 3.5 megapixel stills capabilities with 1080p video versus the iPad can only do 1.2 megapixel stills and about 720p video. Moving on the rear facing cameras, you'll notice that the iPad has completely matched what the Surface can do. A it has a 5 megapixel camera with autofocusing capabilities. The Surface 2 also has a 5 megapixel stills camera, but it has an LED flash that the iPad Air does not have. Both, of course, can do 1080p at 30 frames per second. And to test out some of that video quality, let's go ahead and uh, do a little run through, and I'm going to let you guys be the judge of what looks better to you. Now the last thing that we're going to talk about is the Wi-Fi and battery capabilities on both of these two devices. They're very similar in terms of both. They're pretty much identical in fact. If you take a look at the Wi-Fi capabilities on both of the devices, you'll notice that both of them are 802.11a, b, g, and n certified. Additionally, they can both do dual band frequencies, both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. However, the iPad Air has one trick of its sleep in terms of Wi-Fi capabilities. It has the multiple input, multiple output certification for your antenna so it can actually receive a lot of different signals at the same time so it has an increased bandwidth of 300 megabits per second which is definitely going to give you more stable wi-fi speeds than what you will find on the surface 2. now both of them do have bluetooth 4.0 so you won't find any difference in terms of that connectivity lastly in terms of battery life you'll notice that they have pretty much the exact same specifications in terms of battery life both 10 hours at a uh, multi media playback whether it be videos or web browsing they're both really good in terms of battery life I found uh, really they're really on par with each other and unfortunately both the devices don't have any removable battery so you can't change the battery if you go on a long trip or if it dies out you really have to send it back to the manufacturer but other than that, guys, if you have any questions about anything I talked about, please make sure to leave that on a comment down below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up if you like the video as well. And uh, let me know what you guys think in terms of which tablet performs better for your unique needs and interests. I would always love to hear what you guys think of either of these tablets. And uh, also, if you haven't checked out our other videos and comparisons, please make sure to do so. And the best way is to check out our channel, Majid Sayyid 2. At the end of this link, you'll find some recent videos as well but thank you so much for your support and we'll see you later take care